I've been doing a lot of videos on reactive coding with RxJS lately, and something that keeps coming up is people who find writing tests for observables difficult. Some saying that they think that any benefits of reactive code is outweighed by the increased difficulty to test that code. Now there are many different ways to go about testing, uh, but for my particular style of testing, I've just never really run into any troubles with testing reactive code in Angular. I generally find it much easier. So I'm going to highlight the techniques I use most often to test observables and reactive code. And toward the end of the video, we are even going to look at how to test the observable streams from the very atypical and complex uh, photo carousel component I created for one of my recent videos. Okay, so before we dig into the tests, I have to quickly tell you about Observer Spy, a library created by Shai Resnick to help test observables. So I use this in probably 95% of my tests that involve observables, and it makes everything so much easier. So the basic idea is that you can create an Observer Spy like this. This will handle subscribing to the observable in the test for you, and then you can use that Observer Spy to check values throughout the test using methods like get last value to return the last value the stream emitted, get first value, uh, get values to get all of the values or received error to check for errors. And there are more methods as well. So a typical test ends up looking something like this. So there is more to this library than the subscribe spy to method, but that is pretty much all I ever use. Okay, now let's take a look at our first testing scenario. So we're going to start with this dumb component because I think it will help explain my general approach to testing. So I'll link to a video in the description that explains my overall testing strategy in more detail, but I typically take a behavior driven or black box style approach to testing. So rather than testing specific implementation details, I will test for uh, specific goals or outcomes. So for a dumb component like this, it typically means doing tests like if X is supplied as input Y, then Z should happen. So it doesn't necessarily matter how it happens, just that it happens. With dumb components, there generally isn't much to test with observables as I generally try to stick with only passing in synchronous values as inputs, not observable streams. However, output event emitters are actually just observable streams. So when it comes to testing DOM component outputs, Observer Spy is still useful. So you can see in this test here that I am using an Observer Spy to subscribe to the edit output on this component. And I check that it emits a certain value when the edit button is clicked. So smart components are where my observable streams are generally going to be. And you can see in this suite of tests here that I'm testing the behavior of the checklist ID being edited observable stream. So I'm testing for different things like that it should be null initially, uh, it should emit the checklist ID when the edit is triggered, and it should emit null when the edit modal is dismissed. So in all of these tests, I'm taking the same general approach. I create an observer spy for the observable that I'm testing. I perform some kind of action, like in this case, I'm triggering an event handler, and then I check the values in that observer spy. And in this case, I'm checking to see whether the last value from that stream is null. So all three of these tests do basically the same general thing. I create an observer spy, perform some actions, check the values in the observer spy. So if we take a look at this last test in just a little bit more detail, we can see that I first get a reference to the modal component. I create the observer spy for the checklist ID being edited. I then trigger next on that subject to simulate a checklist with a particular ID being selected. I then trigger the dismiss event on the modal. And now I expect that the stream should have emitted null as its last value because that checklist ID being edited should be reset back to null after the modal is closed. Services are another area where I will commonly be working with streams. Uh, but again, testing is generally pretty straightforward with Observer Spy. So in this case, both get checklist and get checklist by ID are methods that return observable streams. And again, I am just generally creating an Observer Spy performing some action like calling the add method in the service to add a new checklist and then checking 
the values from that observer spy. So in this particular case, I'm checking that whenever the get checklist observable stream emits with a new value, it should call the storage service to store those in local storage. So I trigger adding a new checklist. I get the last value that's emitted on that stream with the observer spy. And then I check that my save checklist method was called with that value. Now let's take a look at how I test observables when I am using NGRX component store. So I won't go over what component store is in this video. So if you want more details on that, I'll link to another video in the description. But in brief, component store is a state management solution generally for local component state, but it can also be used as a simple global store as well. So this store has a couple of selectors and an effect. We have the status and create modal is open selectors and this login effect. So in the test for this, I have a suite of tests for each of the selectors. You can see I have some here for uh, status and we have some for create modal is open. And I also have a test for the login effect as well. And once again, I am doing the same kind of thing. I subscribe to the selector with observer spy, perform some action like triggering the login effect and then checking the values that were emitted on that selector. So if we take a look at the status selector, for example, and we can look at this uh, login test here. So we're mocking a successful login attempt. We trigger the login effect. And now we are expecting that the last value of our status stream should be success. But in this test case here, we do the opposite. We're testing for a failed login. And in that case, we are expecting that the last value will be error instead. And in the case of the uh, login effect, this also triggers a side effect. So on successful login, it should trigger a navigation to the home page. So once again, I'm mocking a successful uh, authentication here. I'm calling the login effect, and then I'm checking that the behavior I am expecting happened as a result. Uh, in this case, I am expecting that we have navigated to the home page. Okay, so now let's get to that complex stream I mentioned earlier. So this one is a bit different because it involves testing that the stream is emitting certain values at certain times. So this is a rare situation where I don't actually use observer spy and it actually is a little more awkward. So there probably are better ways to go about doing this, but this works for me and I don't find it too annoying. And as I mentioned, I rarely run into situations like this. So I'm happy to take this approach. So the difference with these tests is that they rely on using the fake async method uh, to manually control time in the test. So I can test that certain things have happened at certain times throughout the test. Now, generally, I don't really like using fake async and the methods like uh, tick, for example, to advance time, uh, but it also isn't that bad. And again, I'm not doing this very often. So to quickly recap, this component is supposed to display one photo each second. So if we have an array of three photos supplied as input, it should display each photo one at a time with a delay of one second by default. But it is configurable in different ways as well. So I also need to test that we can do things like loop the photos, control the uh, delay time, pause the photos, and also manually cycle through them by clicking the previous and next buttons. And so all of these settings are controlled with these behavior subjects. So again, taking that black box style approach, I write a test that is only concerned with what should happen, not specifically how it happens. So in this case, I don't actually even need to test anything related to observables specifically. I can just supply the input I need, uh, set the settings I am testing and expect that the end result is what I expect. So what I've done to make this a bit easier is I've set up a little helper method here called wait for delay, which is basically just going to advance time by one second and run detect changes. And in this first test, I'm testing the basic behavior with the default settings. I set some test photos as an input, and then I expect that each of them is displayed after the delay has been run. And then I have additional tests for each one of the settings that I mentioned, the paused setting, the loop setting, the static photo setting, and the delay time setting. And each of these is the same general idea. I set the setting I want by uh, just nexting that subject. So if I want to change the pause setting, I'll just uh, call pause.next true. And then I test for the specific behavior I am expecting. And in this case, it involves basically grabbing the, the safe resource URL of the image component that is displayed on the screen. 
So you can see in this case, I, I set pause to true. Then I expect that the photo that is currently being displayed in that component is the last photo in the test photos array. I then wait for the delay. And now I expect that it is still the same photo being displayed because the stream is paused. So the photo shouldn't change. So I'm testing for behavior here. Whereas if we take a look at the uh, test for when the stream is not paused, when paused is set to false, then we expect the photo to change after that delay. So that's why I am checking for the last photo here and the second to last photo here. So as I mentioned, it doesn't really specifically matter that all of this is being controlled by this uh, RxJS stream. So I could swap out this implementation entirely. The only thing I actually need to keep are these behavior subjects and this test should still work as long as the behavior is the same, it is going to result in these tests passing. And just a quick side note before we move on, the applications we have been looking at in this video are actually from my Ionic Start course, where we learn modern reactive development with Angular through building mobile apps with Ionic. So if you want to check that out, feel free to head to ionicstart.com. Although all the tests for these applications are available in the source code, we don't actually cover automated testing in Ionic Start. So if you want to actually be walked through how to write tests for your own applications using a TDD approach, you might want to check out EliteIonic.com instead, which is a more advanced course. Now I know there are more complicated scenarios some people might want to test that are going to involve more granular unit tests where something like marble test will become necessary. So the observer spy docs have a good example of the extra complexity involved in writing a marble test. It's sort of much more powerful, but a reasonably sort of complicated and difficult way to think about uh, testing observables, or at least it's not very intuitive. But at least for me and my style of testing, I've never run into the need for marble tests and I've never found myself in situations where using streams and coding reactively has made testing harder. One of the biggest reasons I like the reactive style of coding is because it makes coding generally easier and more enjoyable for me and testing isn't an exception here. So of course, this is all just my perspective. Uh, if you have a different approach to testing or have run into different difficulties, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Uh, as always, if you found this video worthwhile, please feel free to give it a like or subscribe before you continue on your day. And I hope to see you back here for the next video.